God of thunder. Thunder the road. God of wind and wind. Blessings, family. One love. Greetings to all nations, all tribes, all tongues. In the name of the Most High Power, the Great I Am that I am. A higher a shot, a higher unto the sun. The world called Jesus Christ will call through the Hebrew term Yashaya or Savior. My idol, my redeemer. That's the person who I literally read off and observe his life in the flesh. And he had laid out a great role for man to follow. And I really admire the works of Yashaya. And you know, I just want to adapt the principle. And I think just for me, one of, as I've said many times before, I think my main goal is to um, accomplish all my weaknesses, not just sins, but all my weaknesses, all my trials, all my things, all my temptation. My plan is to conquer all of them before I die. That would be my greatest achievement in life. And not for the reward, but just as looking at my life as a test, as being in the flesh coming on the earth and a chance you know to live and seeing all the mistakes that I've made in life things that I've regret things that I hate about myself you know and would love to fix them because I've always been placed in a position around people who look up to me for advice spiritual advice or just you know sense of direction I can't deny that my whole life and even when I don't, I don't know much, people are still placed around me and I can tell that these guys look up to me. I'm not forcing anything on them, but they literally look up to me. So it seems as if like, you know, I'm like a some form of spiritual advisor in some sense, or just say a good friend or a big brother. I would say, yeah, I like that, a big brother. You know, and sometimes when I find fault in myself, I'm like, who am I for people to even come to me for advice? So by them coming to me all the times, seeking help, it makes me want to become a better person. I, I don't, you know, just like um, a person would be on, you know, police officer or somebody who does not do, do the thing right. I don't want to be somebody who just wearing the uniform and then my works doesn't go, you know, according to what I'm supposed to be doing. So... So those, so these things push me and make me want to become a better person. Make me want to work on myself, you know. And over the course of life, growing up, I never really have a sense of direction of what I want to be. Like, what do I'm not occupational wise. I mean, just as a purpose of being on the earth. What is my purpose? I've never really have a sense of direction of what my purpose was. And the whole time, I was living in it. Because most of my conversations that I have with my friends, um, it's always been intellectual conversations, you know. It's never been just conversation of low-level things on the surface. Our conversation was always deep, me and my friends. Especially when we out there 12 o'clock in, in the night, 2 o'clock in the night out there, we, our conversation becomes deep. At my circle, we discuss things that other people wouldn't discuss. They feel uncomfortable discussing things because it, during the time when I was growing up people were not that not no disrespect you know but it's the truth it's the evolution of the minds of people people mind wasn't really open up to having certain conversation was having this rude boy mentality and people were just afraid to just have a general conversation about certain things you know so I had that circle with me and my friends and these are the things that we'll discuss we probably didn't have the answers but we had the questions to ask about what you think about this what do you think about that and doing this for years I was living in my purpose the whole time because the thing that really 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 seriously the things that I really love is religion like studying religion of all the nations of the world I, I love doing that and I love history I love those two things with a passion I can sit down for hours and hours just sitting down you know watching documentaries and watching you know history and all these stuff just you know i like these things it's very intriguing to my soul so by me doing that i develop a love for having this like i said me and my friends will have intellectual conversation now once i venture off into the historic part and the religious part of it no i have quest more questions now and my questions would be me going to pastors are just asking people who believe in a certain faith what do you think about this not to debate but just to have a 
you know, cross references and stuff like that. Um, during the process of me doing that, I literally had discovered my purpose. My purpose is I love to bring the possibility of God to people. The fact that there is a creator. Let's take the name out of it and just look at the concept of the spirit of the creator. I love talking to atheists. I love listening to their point of view and I like bringing my point of view across. I love doing these things. Um, yeah, I love biblical discussion and it's a, just like I said in general I just like to but to have general deep um, conversation but my strongest point is I love to talk to atheists I love to talk to people who don't believe in the Bible and you know bringing the possibilities and the, these deep questions because once a person starts to say that then it opens up a lot of door because when we look at the universe we look at the planet here we look at everything around us and we see the great wonders and you know you know we we know it have to have a beginning you know and even though atheists believe in a creation at least some of them because it's not one fundamental um doctrine they have but some of them most of them that i've spoken to um believe in evolution or you know big bang or something but which is still the creation you know because it creation means when it all came into being when it was created when it started so it's still creation whatever name they want to put on it or anything so they a, a lot of them do believe in in creation but when they try to take away the spiritual aspect of the you know working behind it then that's when we have deep intellectual conversation and my conversation is not really um to win a debate because I like I keep saying if you listen to me conversation not debate I like conversation I like respectful conversation where I ask you questions you give me time to talk and I you know ask the question and you answer the question and I give you time to talk I love those type of conversation I don't like when you're cutting me off I'm cutting you off and you, you're not listening to what I'm saying because you're thinking about what you want to say next so I like respectful and intellectual conversation which <laughs> I hardly seem to ever get from modern day man because of pride. When a lot of people see that they can't prove their point or they can't answer a question, a lot of people get upset. A lot of people, most of the time when I speak to some people, that's what they do, they get upset because pride kicks in. And for me, nah, it's quite a few times I've gotten into some debate and or discussion and people ask me questions and I can't answer it. But what that does for me to send me home back to the drawing board, because I'm like, I look within myself and say, man, I failed to answer the question today, you know? So now I am, I go home and I research whatever we're talking about. That's what it does for me, bring it back to the drawing board. Accept the fact that you, yeah, you didn't perform well today. But I think that is one of my main purpose, to bring the whole ideal idea of there is a God. A God. Not gods. A God. The creator of the universe. And I, I love bringing that possibility to mankind. And to, you know, bring people back to the past from where we were to where we are today. I like to speak about these things. On the mental state of mankind. Um, how we have degraded, downgraded to what we are today mentally. You know, so I like this kind of conversation. I'm not, because most times people see me talk about the Bible, people think that I'm trying to become like a preacher or an elder. I'm, nah, that's not the spirit that the most I, I place on me. I think I'm just that brother who is just set for a conversation in a park, a conversation in the hallway, you know what I mean? I, I, I'm that kind of brother. And I'm still learning as I go along and do these things. You know? But that's where my strongest point is, my strongest passion is. That's what I love to do. That's what I think about most of the times. I'm a nature person. I might not go out in nature all the time because of my life and the way I live now, but I'm a nature person. I like to observe the planet, observe the things around me. And once you look at these things, it just put a lot of questions in your mind. 
And when you look at mankind and look at the earth and you know, looking at the fact that we have the ability and the capability to make the planet a better place and we don't, you know, these things bring very serious conversation to the table. And that's those are the things that really interest me. <laughs> and some people they be like, oh here we go again. But yeah, those are the things that interest me. I've always been concerned about planet Earth. I've always been concerned about human beings. I've always been concerned about the state of the, the planet, the state of the people, you know, how evil the Earth is, knowing that we can be better. I've always, you know, sit and meditate on these things. And sometimes, to be honest, I wish I didn't care that much. But at the same time, I wouldn't want to be one of those persons who don't care who just get up and live breathe eat sleep and i wouldn't want to be one of those people but sometimes caring for the world a little bit too much especially when you're not seeing it going in the direction that you know it's supposed to go not the way that i think it's supposed to go the way how we know the earth is supposed to be it saddens my heart sometimes you know but through it all through it all i found my purpose I've been living my purpose the whole time. I just didn't know. As I got older, I realized. You know. But I give thanks to life. I give thanks to be here. I'm thankful for the opportunity to come to the earth in the flesh. To live. And learn. And like I said, to work on myself. all the way to the end and to bring it to perfection master the mind master the flesh master the spirit it can be done in a people Christ did it in a man and many other people did it the world make us think we can't do it we can't do it by ourselves that's for sure Especially me, I know I can't do it by myself. Because there's times when I'm going through problems and I'll try to man up and use my mind and use and there's times when I just have to call on the most high. I have to reach out to the eternal spirit, the universal power, the almighty creator, the great I am that I am. Ahaya Asha, Ahaya through our savior, Yeshaya, who the world called Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit. I have to make a heavenly connection. And to the power that put every plant here, that put the grass here, the supreme power that make the rain fall. Because nothing works by itself. Even when we look at the cars and see how the cars are set up, like everything was placed in there for a reason. Everything plays a part and it, the car wouldn't just create from the earth, just manifest and ev or evolve from the earth just like this, perfect, like this world to drive. We know that is a creator. We are intelligent enough to know that. So the planet is created. You look at the trees right now as the breeze blowing the leaves. And you, you can see that, you know what I'm saying? It's life. It's an essence. It's a spirit. It's it's God, man. It's not nature. It's the most high power. So sometimes I have to reach out to the most high for strength. And that's what Christ did. That's why people keep asking, why was he praying? Why was he praying? Why was he praying? Why was he praying? Like, it's what human beings do. Once you come in a human form and you're trudging on this earth and dealing with the temptation because you're living amongst human beings who have free will, free, free will to choose what they want to do and some people don't choose good. So when you live amongst people like this, they'll make your life a living hell. Stress you out mentally. You know, so we have to connect to the most high and deal with the most high at all times. And that's why I, I link with the Father for strength. But like I was saying, you know, we all can conquer the sins. It's not, it's, it's, it's the thing about it because we're trained to live the way we live. And accountability is one of the greatest things that I've, I'm glad I remember this. Accountability is one of the greatest thing, people. Like um, most of these rehabs and stuff, commercials always say like the, the, the first step to recovery is to admit that you have a problem when one person can identify themselves can examine themselves see what you're doing is wrong don't justify it for being right 
change will come accountability plays a major role in change i had to learn that myself i'm still processing you know what i'm saying transitioning from a youth to a you know what i'm saying to a man to a grown man i'm still going through the transition mentally and trying to leave remnants of the things from my past from carrying them over into my age you know but we um we work on ourselves and it can be done one of the things about mankind is that people don't want to take responsibility for themselves people don't examine themselves if human beings would really honestly examine themselves the way how we examine other people around us and see their faults if we would have done that to ourselves we would make changes because i have observed humans and that's one thing i notice with people that when they don't accept themselves being wrong they never change because they'll point the finger at anyone else i call it the adam and eve syndrome adam have you eaten from the tree my wife eve what have you done the serpent i call it the adam and eve effect you know once they start to go into that is not taking responsibility for who they are and once people start to do that i mean individually like every human, the police, the soldier, the doctors, the lawyers, the people who dump in water and poison into the ocean. If people start looking at what they're doing and say, what I'm doing is wrong. But when they find ways within themselves to justify it, that's why change never comes. And that's why repentance is a key. Repentance, what repentance is? Repentance is accepting that you have done something wrong and saying that you're willing to change. And that's why Christ's method was repent, repent, repent and change, repent, repent. John the Baptist's favorite word, repent. You can't repent if you don't accept that what you're doing wrong. You will never go to God and say, Father, forgive me for I have sinned because you don't accept what you're doing is wrong. You'll find ways to justify our people, our things that cause you to do the sin and say they're the per reason and not justifying that you're making the decision to sin. So, you know, that's one of the things that I have noticed about accountability and mankind. But like I said, people, I found my purpose and I've been living my purpose my whole life. Just didn't know what it was. It's just like when somebody would have a good friend among them and never know that this was the best friend until something happened or, you know, they would find out that this person was genuine the whole time. But I found my purpose and I, I thank the most time. I'm about to end it now. I pray everyone have a blessed day. Spread the love of God unto everyone that come around you. Be strong physically, mentally, and spiritually. Um, just spread love and try and follow the laws of the most time. Yeah, man. Shalom. Blessings. Praises be to the great I am Praises be to a higher One who's got the world in his hand